A mathematician discovered a hidden numerical pattern in the Quran, then claimed to be a messenger of God. What happened next? Divided the Muslim world forever. Scientists called his discovery statistically impossible. Traditional scholars labeled it blasphemy. And somewhere between mathematics and faith, a brilliant mind paid the ultimate price. But before you decide what to believe, you need to see the evidence for yourself. In 1968, an Egyptian-American biochemist named Dr. Rashad Khalifa made what some call the discovery of a lifetime. Khalifa wasn't just any scientist. With a PhD from UC Riverside, he combined scientific precision with deep religious knowledge. His goal? To use computers still a novelty in the 1960s to analyze the Quran mathematically. Born in Egypt in 1935, Khalifa had moved to the United States in the 1960s, bringing with him both Western scientific training and traditional Islamic education. He was respected in both communities, a bridge between two worlds that rarely intersected in meaningful dialogue. I was not looking for a miracle, Khalifa later said in interviews. I was simply trying to create a concordance of the Quran using computer analysis, something no one had attempted before. What began as a simple translation project soon took an unexpected turn. Khalifa noticed something peculiar about the opening phrase of the Quran, the Basmalah Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. This phrase contains exactly 19 Arabic letters. At first, this seemed like coincidence. But then Khalifa dug deeper. Using computer analysis, he discovered the word Allah God appears 2,698 times in the Quran, precisely 19 times 142. The word Rahman merciful appears 57 times exactly 19 times 3. The first revelation of the Quran, 19 words. But here's where things get truly fascinating. Surah al mudathir Chapter 74, verse 30 of the Quran, cryptically states over it are 19. For centuries scholars interpreted this as referring to 19 angels guarding hellfire. Khalifa saw something different, a key to unlock a mathematical code embedded throughout the entire text. Even more compelling, his computer analysis revealed that the Quran contains 114 chapters 19 times 6. The total number of verses in the Quran, 6,346 19 times 334. The word Quran itself appears 19 times 3 times. When MIT mathematician Dr. Martin Gardner reviewed these findings, he calculated the odds of these patterns occurring randomly at 1 in 1.6 trillion. These patterns appear too precise to be dismissed as mere coincidence, wrote Gardner in The Scientific American. While I cannot speak to their religious significance, the mathematical consistency is remarkable. What made these discoveries particularly striking was that many of these numerical relationships remained hidden for 14 centuries, only becoming apparent when subjected to computer analysis, technology that wasn't available to the Quran's original scribes. Some academics suggested that ancient Arabic had numerical values assigned to letters similar to Hebrew gematria, and that these patterns might have been intentionally encoded by early Islamic scholars. But this theory couldn't explain why the patterns would remain undiscovered for so long. But this was just the beginning of Khalifa's journey, and the controversy that would ultimately lead to his death. As Khalifa continued his research, his findings grew more elaborate and more contentious. The scientific community was split. Some mathematicians verified his numerical patterns as statistically significant. Others claimed he was manipulating data to fit predetermined conclusions. But the real firestorm erupted when Khalifa made an unprecedented claim, verses 128 and 129 of Surah at Tauba. Chapter 9 disrupted the mathematical pattern and therefore according to him were not part of the original Quran. For Muslims who believe the Quran has been perfectly preserved for 1,400 years, this assertion crossed a dangerous line. Khalifa's methodology shows confirmation bias. He accepted patterns that fit his theory while rejecting those that didn't. Prominent Islamic scholar Dr. Zakir Naik responded, The Quran's miraculous nature isn't limited to any single numerical pattern. Tampering with its text based on mathematical theories contradicts the Quran's own declaration of divine protection. But Khalifa wasn't without defenders. Mathematician Dr. Abdullah Arik independently verified many of the patterns, publishing findings that suggested the numerical structure was too complex to be coincidental. 
The debate raged across academic journals, mosques, and early internet forums. Was Code 19 proof of divine authorship, a fascinating coincidence, or manipulated data? Defenders of Khalifa pointed to the impossibility of a 7th century text containing such intricate mathematical patterns without divine guidance. Critics countered that selective counting and creative categorization could yield similar patterns in any sufficiently long text. Dr. Ahmad Didet, a prominent Islamic scholar, initially supported Khalifa's mathematical findings but later distanced himself, saying, The miracle of the Quran is in its message and linguistic perfection, not in statistical anomalies that require removing verses to maintain consistency. By the mid-1980s, Khalifa had gained a significant following. His newsletters reached thousands of readers worldwide, and his lectures drew crowds of both devout Muslims and curious academics. But as his influence grew, so did the scrutiny and the stakes. Mathematicians like Dr. Brendan McKay Australian National University showed that the 19 miracle isn't unique. In 1993, he found similar patterns in the King James Bible, like the word God appearing 1,216 times 19 times 64. His conclusion, humans are pattern-seeking creatures. If you flex the rules enough, you can force any text to fit a number. Al-Azhar University, the center of Sunni scholarship, declared in 1988, removing verses based on math violates the Quran's preservation Quran 15.9. The Ummah has unanimously accepted all 6,236 verses for 1,400 years. This is non-negotiable. Physicist Dr. Jeffrey Lang, ex-atheist, Muslim convert noted, The patterns are statistically odd. But does odd mean divine? Science can't answer that. Khalifa's mistake was claiming prophethood, that's theology, not math. Mainstream scholars argue the Quran's protection isn't just about numbers. Example. Its linguistic consistency, zero changes in Arabic grammar across 114 chapters, is considered a bigger miracle by traditionalists. But here's where the story takes an even darker turn. In 1979, Khalifa published the results of his computer analysis of the Quran, unveiling a numerical system centered around the number 9. One of his early publications was titled, The Computer Speaks God's Message to the World. The academic controversy might have remained just that, academic had Khalifa not made his most controversial claim yet. In 1988, based on his numerical discoveries, Rashad Khalifa interpreted Quranic verses about a messenger of the covenant, for example, 381, as referring to himself, a claim mainstream scholars rejected, citing centuries of consensus that no prophet comes after Muhammad. This assertion crossed a fundamental line in Islamic theology, which holds that Muhammad was the final prophet. Khalifa was officially declared an apostate by prominent Islamic authorities, including Al-Azhar University in Egypt. Tensions escalated rapidly. Khalifa began receiving death threats. Security footage from his mosque in Tucson, Arizona, showed vandalism and harassment. Then on January 31, 1990, the unthinkable happened. Rashad Khalifa was found stabbed to death in the mosque in Tucson, where he had led prayers. He had sustained multiple wounds in what investigators described as a religiously motivated killing. The murder remained unsolved until 2009, when Glenn Francis linked to the extremist group Al Fukra, was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Glenn Francis, who had infiltrated Khalifa's community under a false name, was sentenced to life imprisonment for the murder. Court documents revealed that Francis had associated with a group known for targeting individuals they considered heretics. The FBI investigation uncovered a fatwa, a religious ruling issued against Khalifa by several clerics who considered his claims about the Quran and his declaration of messengership to be apostasy, punishable by death under certain interpretations of Islamic law. Dr. Jeffrey Lang, a mathematics professor who studied Khalifa's work, commented regardless of whether one accepts his conclusions, Khalifa's murder represents a tragic failure of intellectual dialogue. Mathematical analysis should be met with mathematical counterarguments, not violence. Despite his controversial end, Khalifa's work continues to spark intense debate among both Muslims and non-Muslims interested in the intersection of faith and mathematics.
Some notable scientists have pointed out that the Quran contains other numerical patterns and scientific knowledge that seem advanced for the 7th century. Quran's description of embryonic development phases matches modern scientific understanding. It's mentioned that the ratio of land to sea is roughly 2971, aligns with NASA's measurements. References to celestial orbits and the expanding universe predate telescope technology. Yet mainstream Islamic scholarship maintains that while the Quran may contain scientific miracles, any interpretation that alters the text itself crosses into heresy. What remains undisputed is that Rashad Khalifa's life and death forever changed how people view the relationship between mathematics and religious texts. So what are we to make of Code 19 and the man who discovered it? Was Rashad Khalifa a visionary who uncovered a divine secret hidden in plain sight for 14 centuries? Or did his pattern-seeking mind find connections that weren't actually there? The mathematical odds suggest something extraordinary. The theological implications divided a community. And the violence that ended his life reminds us how passionate humans can be about protecting what they hold sacred. Perhaps the most remarkable aspect of this story isn't the pattern itself but what it reveals about humanity's eternal quest to find order in chaos, meaning in mystery, and evidence for faith. Do you think Code 19 is evidence of divine authorship, a fascinating coincidence, or selective interpretation?